What do you think? Well, at first I thought this said Scientologists. <laughs> <laughs> For the very first time I looked at it, I was like, that's interesting. Maybe we should have worn our glasses. <laughs> Welcome to Scholar Sauce. This is our second math meme review. I'm Alan Perry and I'm here with my friend Zach Hurdle and we're going to make you laugh by looking at a few of these memes that our friend Victor Mogilski off screen here has put together for us. First one, fields arranged by purity. I've seen this one before. This is the XKCD. You got sociologists on the left, but psychologists say sociologists just applied psychology. Bio psychologists have just applied no. uh -huh. biology, right? Biology is applied chemistry, it's just applied physics, and then they think they're on top, and then you have the mathematician over mm -hmm. here who says, oh, hey. I didn't see you guys all the way over there. I mean, the obvious part of this is that, yeah, mathemat mathematics is the root of all science, mm -hmm. right? But uh, I think it's funny, too, that not only is there such a big gap between the mathematician, but the mathematician doesn't even pay attention to anybody else. They're often, like, kind of in their own little world. Yeah, like, is there even anyone on the other side? What do you think? Well, at first, I thought this said Scientologists. <laughs> <laughs> For the very first time I looked at it, I was like, that's interesting. Maybe we should have worn our glasses. <laughs> I'll bet he's thinking about other women. <laughs> What if, I, what if I'm on episode 8 of 10 of a show, I have three episodes left to watch. Well, that part I don't get. I thought this was going to go a different route where the guy is just thinking about math. Because I definitely have been up in the middle of the night as a grad student thinking about There's math. There's lots of times where you're just like, yeah, what, and, what, what, oh, what do you think about this one time right? That happens all the time. I'll just be sitting there thinking, and my wife's like, <laughs> like oh, I just think of a math problem. Yeah, and it's like, no. <laughs> I'm math, and she's like, you're so weird. Yeah, yeah I have but, three episodes left to watch that I don't get. Like, I've, because you got to watch eight, nine, and ten. Oh, okay. If I'm on include, episode eight out of you ten, you got to include you ten. You haven't started it. This is actually kind of similar to like people thinking it really was my pet peeve that people thought two thousand was the beginning of the new millennium. It's not. It's the end of the last one because there was no zero year. So like, there's no zero AD. It goes from one BC to one AD. Like the first century is one AD to one hundred AD. The millennium, 2000, was part of the 20th century. 2001 was the first. Yeah. This was really important to me, though, because I graduated high school in 2001, and all the people in my junior year were all saying, we're the first ones to graduate new millennium. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. It's us. We're doing it. <laughs> I'm sure they really changed their mind. It totally did. <laughs> it totally didn't shun me and, and never invite me to any parties. Right, right, right. Like They're like, oh, this guy. Never mind. <laughs> they don't know I can't tell if a number is divisible by seven. This one's for Zach. This one's for Zach. We were doing divisibility tests. In the class I'm in, we do divisibility tests 1 to 12. Yeah. And even the book is like, I don't care about 7. Oh, oh. It's like, no, no one cares I about 7. I got you. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. You There's take no off. Trick for it, right? Well, there is. You take off the last digit, double it, and subtract it from the remaining digits. And then at that point, you're like, is that divisible by 7? But half the time, you're like, I still don't know. So you have to do it again, you do it again, until eventually you're like, oh, I know that's divisible by 7. Okay. Or not. I'm just finding how many numbers I can find that are divisible by seven while you guys are still talking about how to figure out whether or not. I mean, I get the guy in the corner, like, yeah. totally left alone. Like, that, that like hurt. Like, they're having like, fun. They could have just, they could've just <laughs> done that, and I would have known this was a math meme. Like, they yeah. didn't even have to have a caption. Oh, this is great. This is great. Do you, do you get this one? Uh, 12 minutes later. So the matrix over here, this, this yeah. cosine 90, sine 90, negative sine 90, is a rotation matrix. Right? Okay. And so this rotates uh, clockwise by 90 degrees. Oh, so it physically so it, did it? Yeah, instead it, of exactly. Instead actually, of actually yeah. multiplying it. So what it's supposed to do is it would manipulate the coordinates here to give you the coordinates of the point, that, of the same point that's been rotated 90 degrees clockwise. Anyway, that's a fun one. I like that. Okay. Mathematically annoying advertising. Holy crap. What is this? This is dense. a lot of words. When discussing real numbers, it is impossible to get more value than up to 15% more or more. Oh, <laughs> more, more vague, sorry. Yeah, up than to 15% or, 15 or more. more. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Wait, if someone has paid X dollars to have the word free typeset for you and in other people to read, their, ex their expected value for the money that, that will move from you to them is at least X divided by N plus one. Oh, oh so it's saying that if it's actually free, they had to pay for that. Yeah. You have to recoup that cost. It could be a non-profit. It would be difficult for the phrase, the more you spend, the more you save, to be more wrong. <laughs> it would be difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this, this is actually this is actually a curious thing, right? Because a lot of a lot of places will do this. Like, oh, I want that thing, right? It's on yeah. sale, honey. It's like, but we don't buy it normally, right? So yeah, so, so you're spending more. It doesn't actually help you. If you don't. If you don't normally buy it. Right? Also, they do a lot of. It's normally one ninety nine, but today it's two for three. We're gonna have to buy two. We're gonna have to buy one. 
Yeah. But it never says. But it never says that. So it makes like you think we have to buy two. Yeah. You know, at least at least those are actual sales. I I swear I've seen Walmart put a display out and, say, and it's more expensive. New low, new low price <laughs> or whatever. What's the next one? Okay, which one are we on? Is this the fifth one? Um, yeah. Oh my is the god. First, what is the first natural number? Both are equivalent by a trivial morphism. So me and Victor have had discussions about this, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. This this is this is a really weird one. I agree with you. Natural well, he had an argument one, that I one, he had an argument where I, I was like, okay, he said, well, if you're measuring something with a ruler, you start at zero. You don't start at one. And I was like, oh, that's a good point. And then I came back like four days later because it was like delayed, like thinking about the shower or something. And then I was like, wait, we're, we're talking about like whole numbers. We're not talking about like decimals and fractions and rationals and things. So, so no. Yeah. So screw you. It starts at one. <laughs> the one argument for this that always that, that I think just kills the whole idea that zero should be the first natural number, right? The point of the natural numbers is that they are numbers that are natural. Right? And zero came it took way so, later. Right. The concept of zero was so much later than the concept of the other number. Correct. Right? So like the first natural thing that people counted was, was one. one. One thing. Definitely. Just like my kid. My kid, Absolutely. the first time he ever counted was like, whoa, yeah. one. He was never yeah. like, wow, oh, I have zero fingers. Yeah. Like, that, that, that is not natural concept at all. No. Conceptual understanding is drowning. Procedures and math uh, students. Historical context is sad. Who just cares? completely gone. You know, you know what's really sad about this, and, and you'll you'll enjoy this too. So it is so bizarre to me that math majors are not required to take math history. Are they not? No, none, none of them. I have oh, never is... seen math history of math required for a mathematics major. It's, I have, I, it's always oh, required for math. For math, for math, math ed. Ed. That's right. Always that's required right. for that's math. Right. Ed, but I have never seen it required for math for mathematicians. Yeah. I've never taken the class. Oh, bummer. Yeah. In general, this meme format is a good one. I, I like yeah. this one. I've seen it a lot. It's, yeah. it's one of the it's one of the better ones. I love how he just result, you know goes to talking about the meme format. I mean, the meme format's really good. <laughs> it's so a good content one. Content of the meme. It's a good one. <laughs> that is good. It is good. It also makes me wonder what is the situation when they took this picture. Like, is that kid actually struggling? <laughs> and they're like, it's fine. Just keep going. One second. Okay. Oh, I love this one. This is so good. Do you get this? I have no idea oh, what this is. This is so great. So in LaTeX, so, so LaTeX is a typesetting uh, yeah, you know, yeah, program. Know. You, know, you know that. The problem is, is that several of the ways that we write math come from vestigial forms of writing on a chalkboard. So like the, the blackboard bold R symbol or whatever for the real mm -hmm. numbers, that comes from faking bold font on a blackboard. And it became so popular, people just do it now. And now we have it in a computer font. Well, so something similar happens here when they were trying to put together all the Greek letters in LaTeX. They had to put, you know, all these normal symbols or whatever. And so the epsilon is like the normal way that it's written. Right. But the way people typically write epsilon, they would do sort of like a backwards three. So yeah. Kinda, yeah. You know, that's two different symbols. Right? Yeah, okay. So LaTeX has to handle that symbol. So it, for a few of these things that have a nice handwritten kind of version, they ha they create a var version for variable. Yeah. So this so epsilon gives you the regular like standard epsilon symbol but then the bar epsilon is like the handwritten version and it's of far it. superior and, well it's far if you're using variables you always want to use this yeah. so there's another one that does it too is uh fee and var fee which i think is like the greatest name of any latex command var fee it just sounds so gross like i mean it, <laughs> but it's the same thing, you know, like V is the regular circle with the thing through it, yeah, right? Yeah, the yeah. line through it. But var phi is like the one that kind of like kind of a Y. The, yeah, kind of spins yeah. around. Like the idea of the meme here is that epsilon is like the original, like the OG Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. But the var epsilon is like the pimping out Darth Vader. Mm -hmm. I want to know who what Darth Vader is pimping out, to be honest. Here's a useful counterintuitive fact. One 18 inch pizza has more pizza than two 12 inch pizzas. That's that's true. Do, do they do they do a lot of deals where they say that the one on the right, uh, like do they try to do they try to convince customers that, that they should get the two, the two twelves? Oh, yeah. Most people would probably think that two pizzas is bigger than one, you know. But right, the, make... the larger pizza is almost always the better. Oh gosh. Hey guys, how do I evaluate integral <laughs> square root of x squared plus one? You try trigonometric substitution. Also try <laughs> hyperbolic substitution, or you can try Euler substitution. <laughs> I actually, you know, I can, the, the trig one and the hyperbolic one, I, those ones I, I, I can see just fine working. I'm curious, actually, I, I'd like to see the Euler substitution. I don't think I've ever done that one before. That's that's kind of interesting. I also like the idea that these big buff Are just sitting guys there waiting at their computer to Are, are answering like, 
math question. Yeah, let me help you out with this. Yeah. Let me help you out with this hyperbolic substitution. I'm I mean, totally sure that's what they're doing. They're just at the computer, like refreshing until the question comes for, up. Oh my god, this is my time to shine. Because you know, when you're not bulking up, you can do math. Yeah. So, what was your what was your favorite one out of these? I like that, the pool. Huh? <laughs> it's always it's always good. Like, there's never a bad one out of those. My favorite one was the rotation matrix one. I think that was pretty that was pretty clever. Thanks for joining us on Scholar Sauce. Please make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.